Okay, so now we've recorded stills into our frame memory system and we organize them in folders. Let's uh, talk about how we would easily recall them. The first way is manually through the frame memory menu touchscreen. Let's go to frame memory and go to clips and stills and recall. I can come out here and choose which frame memory output I want to load to. I'm going to go to 11 and 12. I'm going to then touch frame memory 11 and I can just touch a still to load into there. Now I'm actually loading a still that has a key signal with it. In order to do that easily, I can go to pair mode and it shows me everything that's in the system that has a video and a key signal attached to it. And now when I load, I can see the key signal go to the frame memory 12. The other way to do this is through memory, through snapshots and effects recalls. In order to do that, we, the XVS switcher has what we call user regions. There's eight user regions. Each user region has 99 snapshots and 99 effects for recalls. User regions can control what's in my auxes, what's in my frame memories. I can go down to my ENG setup, switcher config menu, and go to user one through eight config. This is where I can tell the user regions what I want them to control as an operator. If I scrolled all the way down this list, you'll see that frame memory one and two is using user one as a control. Frame memory three and four is user two. I do that so that I can use frame memory one and two and frame memory three and four separately. I can recall different clips and different transition types through them and not affect any of the other frame memory outputs. My higher end frame memories are all controlled by user seven. So the way to do this now is I'm gonna rebuild my XVS looping clip here through a snapshot recall. So I'm gonna to go to frame memory and I'm going to go to my output select and change it to nine and 10. I have a, it's got a looping clip playing back in it right now. So I'm going to stop that and turn off everything that I want. I'm going to go then go back to recall and I'm going to go to my clip folder and I'm going to recall that clip that I want to build. I'm then going to go to the play menu and I'm going to turn on loop because that'll be part of the memory and I know I want this clip to loop and I can play it here. And you can see now I'm playing back and when I hit the end it loops from the beginning and plays again. This particular clip, I actually want to have an off move and ping pong it so it plays backwards and doesn't just cut to the start for the loop. I can do that. I can hit stop, loop, ping pong. And now when I rewind it and play this, you can see that it doesn't go back to the start, but it ping pongs back and plays backwards. Great way for an on and off, great way for uh, a, to, a looping clip that doesn't take up as many frames, okay? Now I'm going to store a snapshot. Frame memory 9 and 10 happens to be controlled by user 7. So if I come down to my 10 keypad and I say snapshot, I'll turn off every region except user 7. And I'm going to hit store dot, which shows me the first open and available register, enter. And I stored user 7 snapshot 14. That knows it's going to load this clip. But I want it to tell it to load that clip and play it automatically. So I'm going to go to my snapshot menu and I'm going to come to attributes and I've got user seven selected and I'm going to go to register 14 and go to clip autoplay mode. Clip was on frame memory nine autoplay and frame memory 10 autoplay. Okay. Now, every time I recall user seven snapshot 14, it's going to recall and, and autoplay that XVS clip. Let's see if we can stop that one, recall another clip into this mode, and hit play. And you can see there's another clip that I'm playing in 9 and 10, and I'm looping it. When I touch and recall user 7 snapshot 14, instantaneous recall and autoplay and ping pong of that next clip. And now I have my XVS uh, effect back. Another way and another level where we can recall clips that don't include user regions recalls is through the clip, the frame memory clip playback on my transition module. Easy way to fancy up and do different kinds of transitions. Okay. I can do a mix frame memory one and two clip recall. If I double punch that button, it takes me to a menu. First thing I'm going to do is make sure in frame memory one and two that I'm going to recall the clip that I want to play, which is that one. Now, this fader bar will actually run and play that clip for me, okay? And I can program through this menu where I want my transition to happen. So, as I move the fader bar and I run the clip from frame memory one and two, I get to a point where I know it's full. I can choose my transition type. I want to do a mix, 
but I'm going to say start transition and stop transition right at the same point. That's a one frame mix, which is a cut. So now if I move this back, I can do an auto trans and I am just doing an effect to my two box. You can see now we're in our mode, we're cutting our show and I can come back out of that effects by just hitting the auto trans button and I'm coming back to a full. I can then, you know, cut to my two box, come back to another anchor full or another tape machine full with my effect. And then I can go back to mix and take it out. Once I do this and I like this effect, and I'm back here, I can store a snapshot. When I store a snapshot on that ME, it's local to that ME. It has nothing to do with the user regions. It's another level for me to recall a clip transition and use it very simply in the switcher.